Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. Justin Peters just posted a video with him and Jim Osman answering the question if Jesus is appearing to Muslims in their dreams. He did a video about four years ago that I responded to, and he says some of the same things in this newer video with a couple of new additions. Now, before we begin, please understand that although Justin and I don't agree on all things, we're still brothers in Christ. He's a Calvinist, cessationist, and I'm not a Calvinist, and am a continuationist. But that aside, we talk from time to time and both agree that despite our differences, we are brothers in Christ. And based on your last comment to me, Justin, I too look forward to meeting up with you the next time you're in the Philippines. So, today is addressing the statements and opinions in this recent video. And while there are some statements I agree with, there's also some assumptions made that just aren't fair. And at the end, I'm going to share a personal testimony of how God used me to lead a Muslim man to Christ. And he shared his story with me about how Jesus came to him in dreams. But they start off playing a news clip with a testimony from a guy that says he was going to Mecca for the Hajj. And Jesus appeared to him in a dream and touched him on the head and told him he was saved. And he stopped his trip to Mecca and decided to follow Jesus. And there's a couple of other testimonies from women whose faces are hidden for security reasons. Why? Because when you leave Islam to follow Jesus, your family disowns you. And you may even be killed for your new faith. So that's the first point I want to address as we get into this. People leaving Islam is a big deal and something they wouldn't do unless they were willing to risk their lives to serve Christ. But after those clips, they say this. So Jim, what are, what are your initial thoughts? Well, the first thing I noticed uh, when watching through that video is that this man allegedly got saved just by Jesus touching him on his heart and saying, you're saved, you're redeemed. And there was no explanation of the gospel, no explanation of substitutionary atonement, no explanation of his violation of the law of God and his need for a savior, the role that Jesus has in that salvation. There's no indication that this man understood that Jesus is not just a prophet, um, but also that he is God in human flesh and that as the divine son of God, the eternal divine son of God, that he came here and lived a perfect life in our place and died to death on the cross in our place and rose again from the dead victorious and that he's coming again. No explanation of any of that or the justice of God that the sinners deserve um, in hell, that that, is, that threatens him and that's what we're being saved from. So, I, I mean, I guess it's possible that somehow this man understood those things before he had this alleged vision. Um, or somebody communicated it to him afterwards, and he got saved. But if Jesus is showing up in dreams and visions to evangelize Muslims, he's doing a horrible job of it because he didn't even communicate the gospel to that man. Right. It's, it's like this Jesus hasn't even had, a, you know, evangelism 101. You know, you could learn a lot from Ray Comfort, apparently. Right. I know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this Jesus needs to uh, go through a way of the master uh, a time or two. Now, for the most part, I agree with them. If you've watched Revealing Truth for any amount of time, you'll know that I trained with Ray Comfort in California when I was first saved and agree with their approach of sharing the gospel, that people need to understand what sin is, what the penalty for it is, and how Jesus paid that penalty for us. In fact, I've got a playlist on sharing the gospel with 12 videos dealing with the objections, and one of them is how to witness to Muslims. But my question is, why throw so much skepticism on a person's testimony that came to Christ if you say this? I, I mean, I guess it's possible that somehow this man understood those things before he had this alleged vision. Um, or somebody communicated it to him afterwards and he got saved. Why agree that it could be possible for all those reasons, but then assume the negative about it? Why not just rejoice that this guy left a false religion to serve the true and only God? Well, the reason is because of what they say at the end. But I also think that it is actually a, it's a very dangerous I believe, a, a satanic deception. I think this whole thing is a satanic deception for this reason. If I were Satan, 
And I wanted to come up with some scheme to throw cold water on the evangelism of Muslims. I could think of nothing better than to get it in the heads of professing Christians, evangelicals, to get, get it in their heads that Jesus is showing up in dreams and visions to Muslims. Because if he's doing that, oh, hey, you know, I don't need to risk my personal comfort or even yeah. safety in evangelizing Muslims. I don't need to do that. I don't need to, I don't need to go to Iran. I don't need to go to Syria. I don't need to even share the gospel with my Muslim neighbor. Uh, Jesus has it covered. But no true Christian is going to think that way. We don't stop witnessing to Muslims just because some are having dreams and coming to Christ. And people that are called by God to evangelize in dangerous situations are going to listen to God, not argue with God that they don't need to because Jesus has it covered. This isn't some satanic ploy by the devil to stop Christians evangelizing Muslims. That's a pretty big stretch to think like that. But I want to address some other comments. Inside of Islam, there is a whole category of, of Christian, uh, of ideas about Christ. I shouldn't say Christian ideas, but uh, ideas and, and thinking about Christ. So right. that they would think about him or have a dream about him once in a while wouldn't surprise me at all. But the question is, what is the identity of this Jesus showing up in their dreams? And and is he proclaiming himself to be the divine son of God demanding worship? Or is he just in keeping with Muslim theology regarding Jesus that he's a prophet of Islam? Well, that's a pretty easy one to answer. It's not the Muslim Jesus because these people are leaving Islam to follow the real Jesus. Do I, I, I don't doubt for, at all that Muslims have these kinds of experiences. Uh, I just doubt the legitimacy of them and the outcome of them. But why do you doubt the outcome of them? If these people leaving Islam are being hated by their families and risk being killed to follow Jesus, that's some true fruit of repentance. Yeah, and, and whether or not the Muslims are getting saved as a result of this, that is something that that would would tell with the test of time, really. Uh, what is the genuineness of this salvation or this conversion? Are they getting genuinely converted? But that goes for all believers. Over time, we see the genuineness of someone's faith. And he continues. The scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And yet, in many of these Muslim conversion stories, what you do not hear is any kind of a presentation of the saving gospel and any kind of a presentation of the word of God. And, and Paul says in the book of Romans, that how will they hear unless there is a preacher? And how will there be a preacher unless someone sends them? There, there must be the sending of a preacher and the proclamation of the word of God for salvation to take place. And yet we're supposed to believe that millions are getting saved apart from the God-ordained means of gospel of saving sinners, which is gospel proclamation through faithful preachers. And if that's the means that God has ordained to save sinners, then we should approach with skepticism any claims to the contrary that there are people being saved apart from the preaching of the word of God and the preaching of the gospel. Here's the thing. Muslims believe in many things in the Bible, and they already know what Christians believe saves. Many study Christianity to refute it. So the preaching of the gospel has been done indirectly through God's word. Not all the testimonies are as extreme as the guy at the start that said Jesus told him he was saved. But we also don't know any more of that story. Yes, we have the right to be suspicious of such a statement because dreams and visions in themselves don't save, but they can be a stepping stone that get people on the path to Jesus and salvation. So as strange as that man's testimony is, we shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater, being that we don't know the full details. And the truth is that there's many testimonies of people being convicted by God and falling to their knees, crying out to him. Some listening right now may have even had that experience. As Justin Peters has said in the past, God can do whatever he jolly well wants to. You can even read in the comments below their video some of the people's amazing testimonies of how God saved them in very unique situations. But let's continue. 
And yes. Peter nor Paul seem to leave any possibility for the fact that Jesus would be showing up in the dreams of people to communicate to them and that they would be hearing from Jesus and seeing Jesus in dreams and visions. There's just no sense anywhere in the New Testament that this would be happening on any kind of regular basis. And yet, if you are to believe the claims of the people promoting this Muslim conversion accounts, this is happening by the millions by yeah. the millions, and yet the New Testament is silent about the possibility that this could be happening. But that's not true. Peter quoted the prophet Joel about God pouring his spirit out on all people in the last days, and that people would be having visions and dreams. It's not like this phenomena with Muslims and dreams has been happening for decades. I want to finish off with one last thing before I share my story. I, I think it's a satanic deception. Yeah, I agree. I, I, it's just, it's stories and accounts is all it is. We're asked about this. Uh, you and I are asked about this almost anytime we do any yeah. kind of an event together. This is yeah. something that comes up and, and um, I just, it's, I think it's a deception. Uh, I think it, I think it is intended by the devil to distract people away from the word of God yeah. and away from the truth of scripture and the gospel I mean, if you're to believe that video account, we are to we are to think that these this Muslim got saved without ever hearing the gospel. This is referring to the guy at the start, but once again, who says he's never heard the gospel? We know nothing more than a 30-second clip of this guy's testimony. And not all these people around the world are having dreams like that. So let's finish off reviewing a past video where I share my story about a Muslim man I met. We'll answer some of Justin's other questions, and Nabil Qureshi shares a bit more about Muslims, dreams, and God. You may have heard that many Muslims are having dreams and visions of Jesus and are leaving Islam and coming to Christianity. I have an amazing story of how God used me to meet a Muslim man in Canada and introduce him to Jesus, and he told me about the dreams he was having about Jesus. I'm gonna leave that story until the end, but recently, I did a video examining Justin Peters' views on spiritual gifts, and one thing he said in the interview was about Muslims having dreams and visions, and his view was that it wasn't necessarily true. I did some research and found a short video from him about this. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I like Justin Peters. And while I don't agree with some of his views on things, I do appreciate the work he's done exposing false teachers. That being said, I want to look at some of the things he said because it's important that we don't limit how God works in saving people. And Romans 10:14 also puts the brakes on this notion. Paul says, how will they hear without a preacher? Not without a dream, not without a vision. How will they hear without a preacher? And so right off the bat, this whole notion of Jesus appearing to Muslims in dreams and vision, it has very significant theological headwinds. That's a good point. How can people hear from us if we don't preach the word? But does that mean God can't speak to people in any way he feels like, aside from how we're supposed to present the gospel? But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's hear from a well-known Christian that was once a Muslim, Nabil Qureshi. This dream was the, the one that convinced me. I had one that was very symbolic, and then I had a follow-up dream, and I also had a vision, but this dream was powerful. Mm. In this dream, I was standing at the threshold of a narrow door. Now, this door was just wide enough to fit me, and just tall enough to fit me. I mean, in my dream, it was like, wow, this door is narrow. And at the other side of this doorway was a room that was set with a feast. And people were sitting down in nice clothes at these round tables, and it was like a wedding feast. And I knew in my dream that that room was heaven. I wanted to get into that room, but I couldn't because at the other end of the doorway was my friend David. Now, he wasn't blocking me per se. He was looking forward. In fact, all the people in the room were looking forward, waiting for the owner or the speaker to come and start the event. But I couldn't get in because he was blocking the way. And so I looked at him and I said, David, I thought we were going to eat together. And he says, you haven't responded. And in the dream, right there, I knew I needed to respond to the invitation David was giving me in order to come into heaven. But this is where it got crazy. When I woke up, I told my friend David the dream. And uh, he said, Nabil, this dream is so clear. Just go to Luke chapter 13. And uh, I went to Luke 13 for the first time. I had never been to Luke 13 before. Mm -hmm. And when I opened it up, 
there was a section there that was titled The Narrow Door. And when I saw it, my heart just stopped. I bet it did, yeah. And I'm going to paraphrase it. Basically what it says is Jesus was going through the towns and villages preaching the good news. And the disciples said, Lord, are many going to be saved? And he said, make every effort to enter through that narrow door Mm -hmm. because many will try and few will be able. And you will see people sitting inside at the feast of the kingdom of heaven. Make every effort to enter before the owner comes and closes that door. And so I knew that God had given me a dream straight out of the Bible. And he placed me inside a parable, showed me exactly where I was. And he left my decision up to me. It was very clear for me at that point what I needed to do. Important to note that in this situation and the situation I'm going to tell you about, God is using dreams with the Muslims, but then using his people to tell them about scripture and how it lines up with the dreams. That's just one example. And you can go online and see page after page of other testimonies. And another question I would have is what makes the Muslims so special? Why isn't Jesus appearing in dreams and visions to Hare Krishnas or to Mormons or to, you know, fill in the blank? So what makes the Muslims so unique? Just because Justin can't understand why or how God does something in this situation seems to eliminate the possibility that it could be happening. Let's be honest. God can do whatever he wants, however he wants, and to whomever he wants to. But let's listen to Nabil shed some more light on why God may be revealing himself in this way to Muslims. For Muslims, most Muslims don't believe they can commune with God. Um, Some modern Muslims do and some Sufi Muslims do, but generally in in history and the way Islam has traditionally been taught, uh, God is kind of removed from you. And the only way you can really get guidance directly from him is through dreams. And Muslims uh, have a prayer, it's called Salat Istikhara where they specifically ask God to give them dreams for guidance. That seems to make a lot of sense. And as Justin once said, God can do whatever he jolly well wants to. And these stories are notoriously hard to track down. There's no documentation. Dreams and Visions, Is Jesus Awakening the Muslim World, was written by Tom Doyle, a Christian missionary in the Middle East and Asia for 11 years, and he documents his encounters with Muslims that had dreams and visions of Jesus in many countries around the world. So the documentation is out there if someone is interested in finding it. The best I've been able to come up with, you you see a few accounts, and it's interesting to me, the ones that I have read, this quote-unquote Jesus that appears to Muslims in dreams and visions, he usually sends them to bad churches. He will send them to a Roman Catholic church or to a Word of Faith church. And that's not the real Jesus. Jesus would not send someone to a bad church. Justin says there's no documentation, and from the few accounts he's heard of, the Jesus they see sends them to bad churches. Really? Well, where is the proof of that if there's no documentation? This is an unsubstantiated opinion at best. We'll play the last few seconds from Justin, and then I'll tell you about my experience. So, um, yeah, it just uh, does, it holds no water. It, It goes against scripture, and it goes against plain common sense. A year after I was born again, it was once again Christmas season, and this year we had some crazy snow and my flight got cancelled from Edmonton to Vancouver to see my family. So I spent Christmas alone. I was excited though to serve God on Christmas Day and ask him how I could do this. He said, go downtown. Not in an audible voice or anything, but there was that impression when you just know he's speaking to you. I said, okay, Lord. I packed up some turkey sandwiches to hand out to open up conversation, and I hopped in my SUV. It was 25 below zero that day, typical Edmonton winter. I was driving, and before I knew it, I was downtown, but I had no idea where God wanted me. I eventually pulled up in front of a building and got out of my truck. I saw a guy coming towards me, so I wished him a Merry Christmas, offered him a sandwich, and told him about Jesus. He was drunk and rude, but I gave him a gospel track, and he went on his way. Later on, another guy came up to the building and I approached him in the same way. I asked what he was doing and he said he'd often helped out there. Turned out that the building I was in front of was called the Mustard Seed. I said, oh, that's great. You must be a Christian. He said, no, I'm a Muslim, but I don't worry about that. I just want to help. 
but it looks like it's closed today. So we got in my truck to warm up and I shared the gospel with him. I'd been watching The Way of the Master recently and had just watched the episode on how to share the gospel with a Muslim. He said, that really makes sense. Nobody's ever explained it like that to me before. He asked if he could share something with me and went on to tell me about these dreams he was having about Jesus. He said it always seemed so strange that it wasn't Allah or Muhammad appearing to him. It was always my Jesus, he said. I figured that must have been why God called me downtown and my work was done. I gave him a gospel track and offered him a ride home. It turned out that he'd walked about 30 minutes in this cold weather to help out. I was really amazed. Now, at this point in my walk, I was confident in handing out gospel tracts, telling people about Jesus and planting that seed, but had never led anyone in prayer to Christ. He invited me in for a cup of tea, and I knew God was leading me to accept that offer. He was very poor, no furniture but a small TV. We sat on the floor and we talked about Jesus more. I asked him if he wanted to give his life to Christ, and he said yes. I explained that there was no special prayer needed, but just to talk to God now and tell him the things you're sorry for, that you believe Jesus paid for his sins, and that you wanted to serve him alone. He did that and just repeatedly was saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It was an amazing day indeed. His whole life changed. He was unemployed with no transportation when I met him, but in the two weeks following, job offers were coming in and two people offered to give him a car for free. We kept in contact, my friend bought him an Arabic Bible, and we found him a fellowship group of Christians that were previously Muslims. I have to say that aside from the year before when I was born again, that was the best Christmas I'd ever had. So, does God speak to Muslims in dreams and visions today? I would have to say yes. And I just pray for anyone listening to this, please don't limit what God can do based on a lack of understanding. God can do anything, at any time, to anyone, in any way he feels like. So until next time, take care and God bless. God.